Good evening, everybody. Um, hopefully, everybody can hear me. Evening. I uh, hope everybody can hear me. If any people that I can see can give me a thumbs up. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Debo Fomikwe, and I will be hosting today's event uh, called Why MBA. Um, it is my great pleasure and honor to be part of this, um, this session with you guys that have shown an interest in the MBA and those of you that are still considering uh, the MBA and as part of your life learning journey, I guess. Um, so I am part of um, Henley's adjunct faculty. Um, so I'm fairly familiar with Henley itself. I'm also familiar with the MBA and how it's run. Um, but today I'm just playing a facilitation role to make sure that things go as well as possible and we'll make sure that you get the best value out of, out of what we're going to do. So before we actually start, I just want to lay out some, some protocols in terms of how we're going to run the session and, and how the section is actually structured itself. Um, so as you know, the session for the MBA, this, this session is actually called Why MBA? Um, and it's going to take us between now and about half past eight, uh, which is when we plan to finish. I think that's enough time. But I have to start by just, you know, just thanking the Hindi team, because I think the design of the session is actually quite innovative and it's actually brilliant uh, in terms of how they've actually done it. Because historically with MBA information, information sessions, what's happened is we would come into the room and we'd start talking to people, telling them all about the MBA, and then we start to interact, right? Um, now, this particular format, you actually can start engaging with us and chatting to us and asking questions that you've been burning to ask, right? Because there's a lot of questions that you have, even from before we start talking, because you've been investigating what the program's about, you've been looking at different programs in terms of MBA, the programs at the school and I'm sure you've got burning questions so the fact that we can start interacting in the chat um, I think is quite brilliant um, it's better than just waiting to you know give your questions out there um, so it's a fantastic format and I'm hoping that you are going to use it that's part of the reason we're actually using a format of a meeting rather than a webinar um, because you get to see all the other people um, as well that are part of this particular session and you get to interact uh, quite proactively on the chat with us. So the way we are going to run this is, I've got two panelists, uh, esteemed panelists who are going to join me as part of the session. Uh, we've got our Dean, uh, Dr. Jonathan Foster Pedley, as well as uh, Lynette Zungu, who is um, the MBA, head of the MBA at Henley Business School. So you are in safe hands. Um, I'm just here to make sure that we capture the essence of, of, of what's going on uh, as much as possible. And just so you know, the default setting for you guys who are coming on is that your mics are on mute, okay? Um, that's just so that you know, we don't accidentally get some background noise, uh, but we've got some tech guys in the background as well, just in case somebody accidentally unmute themselves, they'll be able to mute them. But please feel free to join in when you need to. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with Zoom, uh, you can put up your hand if you want to ask a question directly. But we do encourage that people put their questions into the chat. So if you're familiar with Zoom, uh, the chat icon should be at the bottom. If you click on that and you put in a question or a comment, somebody in the background is going to answer you directly. And what we are going to do is throughout this session, including the video that is going to come up next after the panelists have introduced themselves, uh, we will pick up during that time a lot of the themes that are coming through that we think are that we think are prevalent. You know, the, the incidents of those particular thoughts and questions are, are quite prevalent, which means are quite common across a number of you. If we think those ones should be good to have a discussion after the video and the panelists will, will help me in answering those questions and just engaging around those themes uh, such that you leave the session fully equipped 
in terms of your decisions about your life long journey of learning. Because if you are here, you obviously believe in, in learning for a lifetime, which is a fantastic thing because that's part of the formula for success. It is the continuous learning that you're actually doing combined with application of the learnings that you learn from really great people all over the place, whether it's researchers, lecturers, your mentors, uh, your, your managers at work, that's what lifelong learning is about. It only becomes successful when you start applying the stuff that you learn. So truly, truly welcome. Um, and before, we get into our video that we are going to play for you. I would like to hand over to my panelists to just say hello and just briefly introduce themselves. Um, and then after that, we'll get onto the video and kick things off. We'll start with uh, John, please. Oh, thank you very much. And uh, Tabokho, thank you so much for that introduction and welcome to Linneth as well. Tavoka was a previous director of the MBA, and I've known him for a long time from the days he did his MBA, executive MBA at UCT, which is something I used to run for me enough and found it, he did that. Um, one of the professors said he was the most, he was the smartest student he'd ever had. So I'm embarrassing you, Tavoka, but that's exactly what he said. Um, so thank you. It's a real privilege to have you back here today. Um, I also would love to say hi to Lineth, um, who has worked her way through in the MBA department, doing the MBA, to the current head of the MBA. So you're really in great hands. Martin Slegger is the uh, um, head of uh, sales for us. There he is. Tumi Leboach is uh, doing all the background stuff. Yusuf Essak does the works in our sales. And I'm probably missing several people out. Um, I'm going to, I'm actually in the middle of dinner with my family. So I'm going to say hi, duck out, have dinner, come back. And the reason I'm going to do that is, well, we believe in family-friendly learning. And I'm not going to duck out to wear a late dinner, running a bit later. I'm not going to miss time with my family just for a few minutes to do that. And I want to show you that that's what we do, because that's what we expect our, I hope that our students will do as well, is, is make their families some sort of priority. Um, so I think the book has said everything. We're, we're a uh, sort of MBA that's got a lot of prestige behind us. I agree that that's true. Um, it's not something we want to brag about, it just is. But why do we have prestige? Um, I think it's because since 1946, when we were founded, we've just got better and better at our craft. And our craft isn't selling MBAs. Our craft is building the people, in our case, who build the businesses that build Africa. And that really matters um, because when you do an MBA, sure, we all want careers, we all want to grow in departments, we all, all want to get recognized in our organizations. It's a really important thing to do. But recognized for what? Uh, for making more profit, which you just feedback in the company, or building prosperity, communal prosperity, and leading other businesses in the value they create for people. Businesses exist because they create value for people. And that value should be something beneficial. And we should look beyond the boundaries of the business so we don't fall into the traps that companies have done in the, in the last years. And you'll have seen them, big names that fell apart because they didn't um, manage governance beyond their own short-term aims. They didn't think of the consequences on the nation, consequences of including with corruption, which actually keeps the nation poor and stops people the opportunity from growing. And the one big secret about South Africa is we have something called the highest Gini coefficient, biggest differential between wealthy people and poor. And those people who haven't got money are very smart as a rule, and we need to access them and help them uh, access education so that they can build businesses. And you are the forerunners of that. So when you do a Henley MBA, you get the MBA, sure. Uh, but then uh, it's all about building our futures and that we're gonna do together. So thank you for allowing me to introduce myself. I'll be back in a minute. Is that okay, Taboko? May I do that? That is absolutely fine. And your family can also join you on. In <laughs> <laughs> that's a great idea. I'm Ooh. loving this format. So that's great. And please, everyone, uh, chuck it in. Don't think if you ask difficult questions or controversial questions, we won't let you in the MBA. You know what? That's what good MBA students do. And we got broad shoulders and we like the dialogue. Uh, we, uh, so if you, if, you, if, we, if you find that we're wrong about something, Fine, I'll take it. You know, it's all part of my learning. I love learning. So, okay, thank you very much. Over to you. Great. Thank you, John. See you a little bit later. Yeah. And now um, I'm just going to ask the head of the MBA, Lynnet Zungu, to just uh, introduce yourself and say a few words. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Tabucho. Um, and thank you, John. Um, yes, I am also doing the MBA. 
Um, it has been rewarding. I'm actually in the final stages, just busy with my, my dissertation. Um, the, the program basically is fast paced, challenging. It has been an, inten an intensive experience, but it has been equally rewarding. And I must say that I am enjoying and I'm finding that it helps one um, to just develop and create an awareness of where, where, well, when you start with the program, where do you want to start and where do you want to end off? And where do you want to see yourself? I think in the personal development module that is addressed and you are, yeah, you get a chance to look at who you are. And I like that you get an opportunity to reflect, which will sort of also talk about um, that as we progress throughout the day. Um, just as, 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 as um, the head of the MBA, uh, the most important thing I think for us as, as a team and as a, a business school, um, the focus is on, on, on student progression, that when you start the MBA and you embark on your stage one up until stage three, our purpose is to ensure that you start on the program, uh, finish and, and, and get to graduate, but also making sure that you've got the right resources to help you and resources basically are available to assist you in achieving this. So it is our aim that also while you're doing the MBA that you've got a great student uh, experience. The team is here to ensure that while you're studying and attending workshops, whether online or face-to-face, -face, that you have a great student experience, learning and gaining knowledge from facilitators, from peers, and just the Henley community as a whole. So it, 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 it is a great program. And um, I hope that we can actually, at, at, at one stage, uh, welcome you um, uh, to Henley. So looking forward to the evening and thank you, Tebuko, and thank you everybody for joining us. Hope you enjoy the session. Thanks, Tebuk. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Lina. Uh, time flies. You're already doing a dissertation. That's <laughs> incredible. Good to know. Um, all the best in those final steps. Thank so you. As I, as I mentioned earlier on, the format today is, is fantastic in that you can start chatting to us in the chat and you'll get immediate responses. Um, and we are going to get into a video that takes about 20, 22 minutes. The video itself is not necessarily the focus of this session tonight. What it's actually meant to give you a taste of is part of the essence of what the MBA is about. We've got snippets of different aspects of the MBA from people teaching, from students giving feedback and that sort of thing. And we're hoping that the video itself is going to trigger some thoughts in you over and above the questions that you already have, um, right? In terms of the MBA itself and whatever else you know, in terms of your learning journey as a, as a practicing manager or as a researcher or whatever reason you want to do the MBA for. Entrepreneurs sometimes come and join us because they find value in the MBA as well. So the video is really just to give you some kind of feel of what the MBA is about, um, but it is not the main thing we're here for. We're actually here for good interaction around the MBA so that you do leave tonight feeling like you are well equipped to make the right decision for yourself, because that's ultimately this is what it's about. It's a very individual journey, and we pray that we're part of it um, as you grow and grow in your different spheres, in terms of life and in terms of business. Um, but we're really using this session just to make sure that everybody here feels leaves here feeling like they're well informed um, and they can make the right calls for themselves. If we've done that by the end of this evening at half past eight, we would have done a great job on our side. So please, guys, um, feel free to start putting questions in the chat or even comments or insights as the video plays. Uh, in the background, we'll be capturing some of the big themes that at the end of this session, which is about 20 minutes or so, we will then get into a discussion, an interactive discussion with everybody in the room, primarily through John and Lineth. Uh, based on the themes that are coming up. So I really, really look forward to all the comments in the chat, some of the questions in the chat, and then I especially look forward to the 45 to 50 minute session that we're going to have after the video itself. So please enjoy the video. And once again, welcome to everybody who's just joined us. Uh, it's going to be a great evening um, for you as well as for Henley and for everybody else who's around here. So I'm really looking forward to tonight. Thank you. We're going to play the video now. Enjoy. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about um, Henley's, Henley's learning. I think, you know, if you're going to do an MBA, um, Chris will tell you all about that. And you'll be very lucky to, to hear him and uh, Puleng talking later, I think. 
but there's something about doing an MBA that's different. I think we all want to build our careers and, and be sure that our futures are secure. And uh, it's great to be able to slap the badge of an MBA on and then, you know, make your life and make your career and build the world. But I think there's something more to it. When I did my MBA, and it was a long time ago, I, I, I partly did my MBA because I would uh, had a very varied um, educational background. I'd, I'd started off in one area. I dropped out of another area. I then sort of wandered around the world doing all sorts of alternative things for a while before I found my way back. But I think what I hadn't done is, is kind of completed my education in a sensible way. And, and part, partly for me doing the MBA was having all the jargon and the language and be able to sort of suit myself up with all this uh, kind of um, sense that I was really knowing what I'm talking about. And, and when I was working in corporate at the time, it was the sense that, well, at last I can, be, I can be plausible and I've got this language and I've got the concepts. But what happened when I did join the MBA was, it was something very, very different. It was an MBA that was largely focused on personal development. It was very much about who you are. Um, it was very much about applied learning. It was very much about reflection as well as learning a bunch of skills. And I think the MBA journey sort of is surprising because it's almost like this is what you want it for but you find out in the middle that you're getting something quite different quite often. And for me, that was a sense of my own purpose, a sense of who I was, a sense of what I was capable of, uh, also a sense of what I was incapable of. And that was really important because it's very easy to, to launch into a career and saying, well, I'm going to do all these great things. But knowing who you are with your limitations um, doesn't actually reduce your capability what it what it does for me it, it really increases it it humbles you it stops perhaps you thinking you're special and extraordinary in life and we all want to think we're extraordinary but the truth is that we are all very similar and we're all gifted in very similar ways and a lot about our achievement is about the disciplines and the belief we have in ourselves not as being extraordinary but as ordinary people who can do extraordinary things and that's often a message people don't want to hear because we want to hear we are uniquely endowed. But what an MBA really does is take all of us who are, are similar and show that any one of us is capable of great things. It's a matter of choice. I often say in the MBA, oh, I see you too, Shlubi. Hello, I can see you on my screen now. Wonderful, lovely to see you. Um, I think what the MBA really does for us is prove to us that what we have here and here is remarkable and with correct application and correct training um, can do extraordinary things. We really rely on each other to, to show up in life. And an MBA gives you that opportunity to start to understand the capacity of our minds, the capacity of our brains. Often our education system has taught us that we are incapable or we've had an education system that's all about being A's, you know, having A's. And if you're not an A student, you're somehow worthless. I mean, how ridiculous is that? I mean, I remember one of my favorite quotes is it's the A students who become the um, accountants and actuaries and doctors and stuff, although not all, I'm sure. It's the B students who become the directors and it's the C students who own the companies. And that's a, a really hilarious quote really from, <laughs> I'd see Shlubi likes that one. Because, you know, it's often, it's often not about doing brilliantly in that one thing, but being rather than I-shaped, I'm specialized, it's being T-shaped, it's being able to spread across a range of activities, it's being able to integrate and synthesize others, it's being able to motivate and, and engage others. There are many forms of intelligence that are beyond the pure academic intelligence, and we tend to undervalue them. And especially in a country like South Africa, where frankly, and let's be truthful about it, the education system is really poor in most respects. And in the history of South Africa, where people were excluded from opportunity because of the nature of their, their class and race and gender, um, particularly in race in South Africa, you'll see that people started in a sense, I think, not to believe in themselves or not to have access to understand what they could do. And what we're doing, what's happening in education now is we're saying we are really all the same. There is no difference. There is no science of race, for example. It's a social construct. Everybody has the same potential as anybody else. 
And one of the great things about the Henley MBA, for example, is it's an international triple accredited MBA. That means the assessments are sent overseas and um, you'll be assessed with the Malaysians, the Danes, the Swedes, the Germans, the Brits, the Irish, whoever else, the Maltese, whoever else is doing, um, doing that MBA. And nobody knows who you are. And the fascinating thing is that the South Africans <coughs> excuse me, pass as well, if not better, in blind assessed, international, peer-reviewed sort of uh, marking as, as anybody else. So we've got all the intelligence and the talent that we want, that we need in South Africa. And when I started here, we were 20% women on the MBA, about 30% black people. Now we've uh, normalized to a large degree. We're about 80%, 70 to 80% um, black people, and we're about 50, 52% women. So it's starting to reflect the demographics. People are doing exceptionally well. And it's what they're discovering is that the nature of their minds, their intellects are international we are pervasively gifted if we apply ourselves and you're going to get people like Puleng and chris who who know will probably hate me for saying this but who are gifted educators and only gifted educators they're absolutely committed there's a deep passion within those people to to lift people's potential to prove what we can do so there's a very real sense in which the mba is 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 a, is a construct it's a vehicle you apply yourself to the mba in this sort of artificial period of time of three years and you have all these assessments and every time you win one you move on but it's not like you pass this and then you go to the next one you pass this all these different parts of learning start interweaving with each other and compounding it's a rich complex body of learning that you enter that starts to develop your brain as well and your your capabilities we start off with a limited scope and then we have a broader scope. And then by the end of the MBA or the other courses, you're dealing with a lot more complexity, which subsumes the others. And so you're starting to mirror a pathway from sort of middle management through to senior management into international management in a level of complexity you're dealing with. So we have a lot of great educators in, in, in Henley. And that's, I think, one of our great strengths. Our mission, though, is we build a people who build a business is to build Africa. So wonderful though it may to have an MBA, it's not enough, a master of business administration. How about some mastering business activism, activism or um, mastering business acumen or, or masters in building Africa, all those other MBAs. Um, those are things that really matter. So you've got the opportunity when you get this sort of qualification, yes, to build your career and, and build capability for families, but really contribute to the nation and the continent and the world you want to create. That's really what you've been called to do when you're doing an MBA. It's not just for you. You're educating yourself. And with that comes an accountability and a responsibility to make something really special in life. We need this world to change. We are working with you because we believe you will be those people who make that world change. The last thing I would say about learning is that uh, if you believe that A's matter, that's wonderful and good for you, you know, but the quality of your character and who you are does not depend on the quality of your marks. In a very real sense, you choose your own marks in an MBA. You've got trade-offs, you've got families, you've got jobs. Sometimes you won't be able to put in the effort to get yourself that very high mark. Or maybe it's something you know nothing about. And you don't measure yourself by the absolute end point of that mark. You measure yourself by the transition, the delta between where you were to where, you, where you've achieved. Because if you started hiring a little bit of learning, yes, you might have a high mark, but your movement isn't very much. But if you started here knowing nothing about something and you've lifted yourself up to here, and lots of people have done that, you're surrounded with capable people who can get things done. So perfectionism is a pathology. It's a pathology. If you're proud of being perfectionist, well, Good luck, because what you have to do is get things done and you have to ship, you have to get those things out, you have to deliver. And because it's adult learning, you're gonna learn as much from the people around you and you're, and if you look at the screen, you'll see some wonderful people there. Um, and because it's adult learning as well, just remember the books haven't evaporated when you finished your test or exam, they're still there. So if you want to go back, if you haven't done as well as you want, you know, then go back and restudy. I mean, you're gonna build your knowledge. You are the masters and owners of your own learning. There's such an intense focus on personal development that it may be uncomfortable at first, but you learn 
quickly the importance of getting in touch with your authentic self as you engage with the world around you so that your decisions are in line with who you are as a person at your core level. If one of your people, one of your staff members that come on a program of ours can go back into Standard Bank or into Coca-Cola or into Food Lovers Market and think critically about what they're doing on a daily basis, the way they're leading their lives, the way that they're managing people, the way that they're working in the community, they're critiquing things, they're not taking things at face value. If I don't take things at face value, I do have to gather data and I do have to think very differently about things or I don't grow and our business wouldn't be growing. And so I'm challenged constantly to think critically. I'm not going to bang on about it, but I think it's probably one of the most important things I can tell you today. There's also some other opportunities that's come across my way um, outside of the company from uh, an international global um, um, broadcaster. And um, I'm very pleased that this is a much senior, more senior position that I'm looking at. Um, and today, here I am, I've completed the PG dip, and I'm very, very pleased to, have to say that I'm, I'm, I've started my MBA journey and um, it just feels like home. It feels like I'm back, um, you know, to my old self. And I'm able to engage and um, do some, you know, some real work again. I see this as a new start in my life, a new start in my career. But I'm very happy to say that for the next 30 months, I will be still with my Henley family. Don't be scared about studying. Studying is not school. You're not going to sit down and there's going to be a teacher looking over your shoulder. This is adult learning. Um, you can do anything you put your mind to. You, if you say, I'm going to be the best at what I want to be, you will be the best. Just have a positive mindset, go in there with an open mind. And if you're struggling with something specific, um, ask for help. There are so many mentors and so many people that can hold your hand and assist you. And some more advice I can give is, if you are the finance guru in the group, don't take on all the finance tasks. Let someone in your group step forward and let them practice and then you guide them because we've learned that in that way everybody will pick up skills that they've never learned before and in that way we all as adults we learn together and we learn different skills and make the whole group strong and succeed together. My toolkit has been sharpened and I understand the drivers of business, the impact of business on society as a whole. One of the things I think uh, that we're, we're most amazed about in the UK with, with the way things are moving in South Africa is that m more than half of all of our MBA students around the world, more than half of people currently studying are studying from the South African campus. This was never about getting the MBA next to my name on LinkedIn. As a matter of fact, I might not even do that. But here is the thing, after every single stage, after every single module, whether it was processes and systems, whether it was, it was finance, um, whether it was managing people, I actually saw a change in my life. It brought a change to the way that I work. Um, it started changing the way that I um, that 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 I am to my family, to my friends, and they began to see a change in me. So what actually really starts to happen when one does the MBA is that you you literally see yourself developing through the process. If you come on the program, this is also part of home for you. So we we're always we always love it when uh, students um, from the South African groups and especially at graduation. They come over and uh, visit visit us, but um, I'm going to stick a, a question on this. Then, if Henley is the answer, what was the question? And this is a personal development question for everybody here, really. If Henley was the answer, if Henley is the answer for you, then what's the question in your life? What's the question in your career? What's the question in your professional uh, persona? What's the question for you for which? Henley would be the answer. And we would definitely want you to think about this before you come on the course, because this is, this is what the personal development starts with. It starts with a very strong examination of um, why you've chosen, why you've chosen to make this intervention, because it's a lot of time, uh, it's a lot of effort, and it's a lot of money. So what's it, 
what is the individual what is the unique thing that is creating this space that you need to move that you need to make this this change in and if you can understand what that is and, and i'm not saying you have to understand that before you arrive or that even you will understand that um, when you arrive but we keep asking we, we keep circulating this question and it's not always a comfortable experience as some of the some of the alumni will tell you that um, you know being forced to introspect be forced to take a good look at yourself is not an always an easy thing to do but that's what makes it valuable that's what makes it worthwhile and if i may say so that's what also holds together all of the technical learning that you're doing on the course so all of the all of the stuff that you're learning in all of those modules what what binds it all together is your evolving answer to this question if henley was the answer what was my question to get me there and you may you may not have a clear view and that's okay but it's it's asking the question that does the work it's so time for presentations and we're going to give each group just a maximum of five, 45 seconds to take us very quickly through your collage. What I'll do to make it easy is I'll share the screen from my side. So we'll start with breakaway room one so that you are ready when we get to you. You have a spokesperson, you speak for 45 seconds maximum, and then we move forward as we have a lot ahead of us. Now the collages are really looking amazing. So. Breakaway room one, 45 seconds, please share. What is this all about? One, of, one or two key things that you discussed. Hi, it's Goodness Stankovic. So we talked about life, uh, how we view it at Henley, that uh, firstly, we will be liberating the best out of the people and ourselves through learning. That's what the L will stand for for us. And the eye is really having an inquisitive mind where we will question things. We will question why are things happening the way they are? What is going on around us in the world? Uh, what can we do to be better in whatever jobs we are doing in the world, in our families? So we'll just have this inquisitive mind that keeps growing and expanding. And we looked at F as a flow. You just have to keep it flowing, keep it going, that you're not stuck into any idea. You just flow with whatever that you get evolve and change that is the e of the life part it's evolution so we will evolve from the form that we in today to the form that we will be when we complete the course and hopefully take that evolution right throughout life through our careers through our contribution in the businesses and the wider society so we still stick with the life acronym beautiful please let's give them a serious serious zoom applause please Everyone, give a serious Zoom applause. I love that. So liberating ourselves, having an inquisitive mind, having, being in a state of flow, yeah, and evolution. I absolutely love it. Thank you so much. Break Thank away you. room two. Are you ready? There you go. Um, so good morning, everyone. Uh, our team, Lindy Wei and Yodisa and I, we thought of we looked at the words that were given, the task that was given to talk about history, to talk about um, innovation, um, live and life. So we, we adapted life and tried to resonate with where we, where we are. And so the image on the top is ideas beyond just pen and paper, uh, creative ideas, putting them on paper, putting them on, in images and pictures. And then the new that's behind the images there, it's new way of learning, new way of looking at problems, new way of reflecting, new way of leadership. And then we looked at um, expansive learning. So that image of the lady in the air doing yoga, is, it's being stretched. It's, it's just pushing your limits, uh, you know, your, the Henley MBA is heightening your awareness, your perception of businesses, processes. And that's what we felt uh, should come into this. And then Henley being truly African, the white building we see as we drive past the highway. And the image of the different chakras talks about the journey of personal development that this entire MBA takes us through and understanding 
how we are able to sustain our enthusiasm, sustain our energy as we go about through the course. And the rising sun, the African rising sun is um, where we are, who we are as Africans, aspiring to achieve bigger and better things for not only ourselves, our companies and the continent at large. So live fully in the moment. That's our collage and thank you everyone. Live fully in the moment. Everyone, please, let's give them a Zoom applause. Really fantastic. Thank you. Love it. Let's live fully in the moment. And then let's try and stick to time, 45 seconds. Otherwise, um, I don't want to get in trouble with Odu. <laughs> OK, room three. Cool. So um, I was in a group with Bongani, Honest, and Yannick, and it was ab absolutely fantastic. For, uh, just briefly, we thought our journey really needs to incorporate curiosity, as has been uh, expanded on. But it also has to include humility and a sense of vulnerability, letting others in on who we are, what we're about, where we want to go, so that they are fully included in our vision, our personal vision and our group visions as we continue to lead teams at work, but also lead ourselves in our own lives. And we put, we had to put in the, the young girl uh, living her best life, enjoying it, um, because that's what we are motivated by. And that's definitely the type of fulfillment that we think could come out of a Henley journey. And then we can't exclude our families and we put in there the, the rocks being balanced because we, as much as we are thirsty for the knowledge that Henley will give, we also are always considerate to the impact on the people who love us the most. And then I see it's just a little bit obscured, um, but we had a, a pebble uh, dancing there on the surface of the water because we know we already have impact, but we want to magnify that impact in the spaces that we occupy. And we definitely want to then embrace that Hindi life. Cool. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Please give a Zoom acknowledgement and applause and celebrate that creativity. <laughs>
into who you are and be a successful person, whatever management practice that you, you kind of undertake. And so it's a core part of the design of the MBA. In fact, a lot of students uh, come in worrying about finance and strategy and these things are gonna be, have the biggest impact in terms of their future success. And on reflection, late latter part of the MBA, as well as long after the MBA, the lessons that they most remember are really around their personal development. Um, so it is an integral part of your own personal growth, uh, how it's actually done and how it's conducted. We can get into that detail. Um, and I guess maybe I'll ask Lynette to just add to what she's kind of written in the chat to just take it a little bit further in terms of, I mean, it's a, what, it's a 30 month program. How does that get weaved into the different modules that people come into? Um, sure, th thanks Teboho. Um, I think with the personal development um, module, the idea behind that is that when you start your MBA as, 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 um, as early as in your stage one, in your starter workshop, you started looking at self-awareness that you've already mentioned. Um, and you start looking at uh, topics such as personal beliefs, assumptions, which explain your capabilities, your motivations, and how you approach learning as a whole. So your beliefs and principles are underpinned by core universal values and the module just unpacks that. And I think what, the, what PD does again, what personal development does is that you are taught that self-awareness requires space, time, and just giving yourself permission to reflect. And from that, you are then able to find out what your aims and goals are, whether it be work and in life. And after establishing where your gaps are, uh, you can then systematically build a personal action plan and your ability to articulate, articulate your thoughts, your emotions, your goals, achievements ac ac across a range of media um, is, is basically encouraged. And you demonstrate these via critical thinking and, and, and the, the team basically, John mentioned Chris Dalton, they help you with achieving the outcomes and you basically get allocated a coach who will mark your personal development assignment from uh, stage one up until stage three. If you have set goals for yourself, you will be asked to, you'll be checked on, have these goals been accomplished? Um, have you reached uh, whatever uh, aims that you have established at the start of your MBA? So there's always that reflection that's taking place from the start of the, of the program up until um, you complete. And while doing the, 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 the personal development module, mod, module, there's areas where an example learning and it is to help you maintain a good academic progression. So the personal development module basically complements um, all of the, the basically reflection and what you want to try uh, and achieve. And we encourage you to understand your managerial identity and practice from many different angles. So there's a lot that's covered in the module, um, but awareness is one, is one of them. Um, Self-awareness, you are asked to, to, to put development plans together, building a career. So building a career, how do you define your career? What is your personal strategy? And you are asked to look at yourself as a reflective manager. What is your purpose? How do you influence your context, whether it be at home, whether it be in business? And I've, men I've mentioned the, the self-awareness part, what has brought you here, which I've put in the chat, and what sort of person are you? And where do you want to be in, in, in the next five years, in the, in the next 10 years? So it's one of the modules that a lot of our students come out after finishing an MBA. Um, that it was one of the best models that they've done because it has allowed them to reflect and come up with a purpose, if I can put it simply. Thank you. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for that, Lyneth. I uh, really, really appreciate it. Um, for a second there, I lost sound from your side, so I'm not sure whether it's me or not, but we got the essence of, of what you are, you are kind of explaining in terms of, in terms of the program itself. Uh, John, just... if you didn't hear... The, there was a, a question around this whole reflective practice and what it's about. So what I'd done is I just asked Lynette to just kind of explain, um, you know, from an MBA point of view in the curriculum and how it's weaved into that. Um, I'm not sure if you'd like to add uh, a perspective that is not necessarily a technical one in terms of the program itself um, around um, being reflective, generally speaking. Well, I thought it was really well answered, actually. So there's not an awful lot I can add to that. 
Um, I would just like to say that, you know, understanding what reflection in is, is a little bit of a challenge. Um, because when we write, and you write reflectively, uh, we often write sort of performatively, you know, trying to get people to respond to what we're saying or, or trying to make an impression. Reflective writing is very different. It's, it's thinking about what, so what, now what? First, you kind of record like a video camera all the, all the things that have been happening and you just describe them. And then you have to let go. And, and, and it's very difficult because it's messy. You've got to model, well, what did that mean? What did I feel? What did other people feel? And there's no right answer to it. And so um, you start talking about that uh, and it feels quite embarrassing and exposing to begin with. But when, when these things are, what happens is your mind starts churning through and, and your, your dialogue to yourself clarifies. And then quite often there's this sort of epiphany happens. You say, oh my goodness, that's what it's about. And it takes you somewhere. So reflective journaling is powerful. When you're assessed on this, you're not really assessed on what you write and whether it's right or wrong, but you, at least when I assess is you're assessed on whether it is actually reflective rather than descriptive. And so we try and coach people towards reflecting and, and getting used to that sort of place. So you're not judged on, on the content of what you say, but you are encouraged and coached on how to be reflective rather than descriptive because it's a powerful way forward. And I have to say that the capacity to do that is probably one of the most important senior management capabilities you can learn. And one of the reasons I think why this MBA um, has such a good effect on, I think most people, if not nearly all, uh, who come through it. Um, I'd love to say all, but the reality is we always have, um, there are occasions where people have life issues or maybe they don't get, get it, but the vast, vast majority get a lot out of this, that's for sure. Great, thank you so much, John. Um, and um, the chat seems to be picking up. Um, the one other theme, obviously, which is, is likely to be dominant is the world has been through what I call the ringer over the last year and a bit with COVID um, and all that it's, it's, it's brought forth. And so I guess the, the main question that most people have is our take on COVID and some of the stuff that we're doing and whether that's going to have a continued impact in terms of remote learning, uh, virtual learning, are we going to have blended sessions or hybrid sessions and that sort of thing. So that's coming up in a lot of people's minds. And there's other questions linked to that, uh, including the cost of the program as a result of that. And everybody seems to be comfortable with everything digital all of a sudden because of COVID. And so the, the question then becomes how much has Henley's curriculum kept up with that? Is, that? is there a plan for Henley's curriculum to kind of keep up with that? So I think that's kind of all wrapped up in the whole COVID story uh, being virtual, some people yearning for physical interaction going forward, um, and Henley being a global, a global institution with faculty from all sorts of places around the world and the complexity that goes with that. Um, for those of you who, have, who are soccer followers, you'll notice that uh, the Champions League final was meant to be played in Turkey, but because of COVID, the venue had to be shifted last minute uh, to Portugal. Now you can imagine the complexity of doing something like that. Uh, this one kind of involved one country, or at least two countries, because the two teams were both from the UK and then Turkey. Uh, now you can imagine with all the students from around the world that attend Henley Business School, and the faculty that travels around the world delivering this quality program. So it's quite a complex thing, but I'm hoping that we can get a sense uh, from the Henley team in terms of our approach to COVID, our thoughts in terms of the impacts and, and, and all that goes with it. So John or Linith, um, perhaps if you can share with us. Um. Linus politely waiting for me, and I'm politely waiting for Linus. Okay, let I'll shall I go first, Linus? Then, okay. Um, yes, please go ahead, John. Right, thank you. Um, I think that's a great question, and one that we're spending a lot of time on. So let's look at the I, let's look at the idea of why should we reduce the fees for an MBA because you know people aren't getting their lunches, etc. And I take this trivial, it's not so trivial re, thing as a point to talk about business. Um, so it's true that when you do an MBA, we would include lunches. We don't make it part of the MBA fee. It's part of the overheads we take. So what happens is that we don't supply those now. But what we have had to do, we've had to 
by a whole set of new equipment. We've had to train up people in different ways. We've had to have everyone working from home. We've had to produce extra coaching and counseling for our staff and for the students and extra support programs in research and academic learning, psychological literacy, system thinking, many things of how to work. And so for us, it's been a, a really big investment to be able to transition two weeks before lockdown and continue to deliver, um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of value because we get feedback from people all the time. We, we've improved our feedback processes as well in the virtual world by increasing the uh, class reps and increasing the coaches and putting our director of edu executive education in charge of MBA learning experience and continuing to recruit more people. So it's been a really big investment to be able to cope and manage quality virtual learning in, uh, in this. And so we, you know, like we've managed to not increase the prices, you know, and we've, we've managed to deliver. So that's the sort of allegory for some of the things that we, that, that happen in the virtual world. Um, and one of the things that happened is that we, of course, uh, safety becomes primary. So one of the things we've done is, is, is gathered together some really good safety people. One of them is online here, I see tonight. Um, people who've been in charge of uh, very significant safety operations and flight up, you know, within South African Airways. People who've been involved in very um, high degrees of safety, again, in aeronautical operations. We've got a pandemic specialist online. We're working closely with Discovery to virtualize doctor's practices as well for an online virtual program we're doing, which has been very popular. So we are pushing our own practices forward all the time. So how does that reflect in an MBA? Um, I think there's two ways you can do it. One is you can add loads of content to it. And the MBA we have is continually evolving because it's designed and fed through from the UK with information from us. But the nature of this MBA, it's, it's, I always call it an MBA for practicing leaders and practicing managers. We're going to do one year. We, we spread it over three stages to take 30 months. We do that to give the flexibility, but also to start to address the issue of how do you learn management with an MBA? So by doing a module and again, going back and practicing it, not only do you put the theory into use, you also apply it in your context. And that is very typically the project-based learning we do. And the assignments are often very individual assignments based on the topic, but applied in your context. Your context is changing and therefore so is the learning because we're not asking you to write the theoretical thing, we're asking to see how it applies within, in this case, COVID situation. So it forces you and others learning to, to deal with it. Your reflection helps you grapple with that. We also encourage you, one of the key things in the MBA, don't think the MBA is just the content you're studying. It's an opportunity to enter your own designed academy of 30 months, because you should do more readings, more thinking. Uh, you should take the opportunity of having people around you to inquire, to talk about them, to push your learning beyond the actual basic content of the MBA to something more, because that's what we teach you to do. We teach you the skills to have critical thinking, and we want you to apply them in a different way. So it's sort of self-levels. In terms of what we do in terms of digital transformation, uh, we do considerable training on that um, ourselves, and you will be, be practicing that. Should we have an elective on that? Well, perhaps we should, and we'll, we'll get a, go ahead and designing that as well. But in the management research challenge, you choose the topic area there too. And should you decide in your, in your management research challenge, which is the final stage of the MBA, like a thesis, to apply it to context related issues, you would be looking at issues of working in the virtual environment very typically. However, we won't be in this situation forever. You know, vaccinations will be coming. Um, but what will happen is we'll be over the next year probably reducing our our distance till we get to some different form of normal. Uh, very typically, we, we, I expect us to be masked, et cetera, and distance for a year. We're turning the premises you see behind me very carefully into our, what I hope is gonna be one of the safest operating environments for a, a university business school in South Africa, using that team I've talked about who produced a really good safety operation. I want to change the ventilation system so we get a high degree of ventilation turnover We've covered what you see behind me with, with better intents. So we have outdoor working spaces and we're gonna be very aggressive and um, on top of uh, keep you know learning uh, to, to operate in this environment. So I think you can safely say that, you know, an MBA like us, which is 30 months, which is for mature learning people who have families and jobs and which is all about being applied, 
And I think that is a really special element of the Henley MBA is not only you learn something, but you're applying and you're learning the limitations of what you're learning at the same time. I think you, you get a lot of contextual learning as well. Um, and as I say, this is andragogy, not pedagogy. Pedagogy is like, uh, you know, uh, pediatrics is uh, child learning. It's based on that. Andragogy is from the Greek for adult. And this is really adult learning where we work with each other and we're all the same. We don't aspire to or pretend to be superior to anyone. We should be learning faster than you. And that's what I tell all our staff and all our faculty. If you're not learning faster than people you're teaching, you're an autopilot. You better get off it because that's not the Henley way. So that's my answer to that. Sorry, it's a bit long-winded. Great, John. Um, I think you've, you've answered even more than I actually asked because I guess some of the stuff that's in the chat, which is, which is truly fantastic, because I was going to move on to, I think it's Lawrence Graham's comments that came up earlier talking about, you know, academic learning and personal development is all well and good, uh, but how does Henley equip uh, people to, you know, to practically move up in the world of business? And I, th and I guess you touched on that by kind of saying that the knowledge that you get from all these great people and from all the great research is no use to your future success if it's not applied. Right. So I guess if you can just maybe make or emphasize or talk a little bit more about which is part of our USP as well as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a business school, um, is that the emphasis that we put on application and how we actually do that and the importance of that uh, in, terms of the, in terms of the process and how that also plays a feedback role into your self-development. As you are, as you are progressing through the program. If, if I may, Lynneth, I'm sorry to hog it. This is something I've spent a lot of time on. Um, one of my favourite books is is a severe condemnation of MBAs. It's called Managers Not MBAs by Henry Mintzberg, and I advise you read it. And um, what it says is that many MBA programs only teach you theoretical knowledge and create, in a sense, create an elite. Um, and what we need in a country with the highest Gini coefficient in the world, with most people stuck in, you know, as I said before, stuck in um, poverty and without access, is we need massive access to people. Maybe if you had an elite program, you'd take a very narrow lead, only 2% or something of South Africans take a master's degree. Terribly low. Only 10% take first degrees, compared to about 50 in some countries like the UK. We have to change all that, and we're working on it. So if you just take elite and then increase their knowledge a bit, you just, but what you want to do is like what George Washington University did in the USA. They took people who maybe wouldn't have got into MBAs normally at low level, but they, the rate of their learning was massive. They didn't quite get up to the level of the elite, but what they did was take a massive number of people through to a very high degree of learning. That's what we need here. So that book by Henry Mintzberg talks about management practice. How do we teach people to be practicing managers? You can't do that with a short immersion program of one year. There's no way, you, all you can learn is about. But when you've got a program that takes 30 months and it's part-time and you're working at the same time and thinking about your work and practicing the work, you start to apply what you've learned. And, and that is what we do. Our programs are in basically management practice. We build the people who build the businesses that build Africa. You can't build people who build businesses by not having them trying things out in the real life. Um, and failing and learning to capture their failures early. Laurie, I know, is a pilot. And, uh, you know, I hate to say this, but pilots make lots of mistakes. Um, Laurie will probably disagree with me, but the big thing about pilots is they catch mistakes at the earliest possible moments and nobody knows they've done them. Um, and the accidents happen when mistakes aren't corrected early enough. It's like riding a bike. You're never balanced. You're always balancing. So, you, you know, but you, what happens is you catch your process. And so with an MBA like this, which is designed for adult people working, it really is about experiential learning and starting to learn about management practice. And so that, uh, the fact that we care, the fact that we have our family friendly program, and the fact that we're the only international MBA um, qualification that's taught in South Africa, it's uh, interesting, you get a UK degree as well, um, is the reason I think people come to us. Finally, I would say we never do competitive selling. Um, I was on ENCA or Business TV, I think, yesterday, uh, telling people about this. We, if you ask about VITs or GIVs, we say we really like them. You know, go and have a look, fantastic, or UCT, fabulous. 
And the reason we do that is we have such a big need for education in this country. I'm not going to waste any of my time knocking any other business schools. In fact, I'm going to work to collaborate with them. So I've, I'm, I'm collaborating with Morris Fredebi, with Vitz. We've collaborated with uh, Gibbs and we've won an international award. I'd like to collaborate with UCT. And there's no space for that sort of thinking anymore. We've got to work together to build education in the country and that's our game. So that's the best answer I can give to that. So I'm now going to be quiet and let Leonard talk properly. <laughs> Sorry, Leonard. <laughs> um, no, John, that's fine. I know that you are um, <laughs> very knowledgeable on the subject, so it's good that you can... Uh, get carried away on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Cool. So, so I'll come to you just now, Lyneth, just in terms of expanding this a little bit further in terms of this application story. Uh, thank you for that, John. That, that's really helpful um, in terms of why we emphasize, you know, applying ourselves. Um, now with the whole application story um, of people taking the learnings from the business school into their work environments, there's obviously a, a, some kind of insinuation there that, or, impl or something implied that you must be working, okay? And so normally in terms of access to certain workspaces, you would assume that each student has a place that they can go and apply themselves to uh, that is complex enough, that space for them to really, really get to the nuances of the subjects that they're kind of learning. Uh, but not everybody, especially with this whole COVID story that's actually gone on over the last period, is currently employed or is in a business of any kind. So how do we, within the MBA program, how do we support that? Um, maybe a question for you, Lynette, in terms of being able to support people to to genuinely apply their learnings in real environments so that they can really learn. Um, thank you, Tabucho, for the question. And you are right that um, some of our students have been unfortunately affected by the current situation with COVID. Um, yes, the Henley MBA does require that you have access to information as most of the, actually all the assignments are quite practical in that you take whatever you've learned in class and apply your learnings. So you are then given an assessment that requires you to look at an opportunity or a challenge um, in your current workplace and how can you actually uh, come up with solutions or if it's, a, as if it's an opportunity, um, how can you grow that? If it's a challenge, how can that be resolved? So what we are encouraging our students to do, we've got quite a number of um, not, uh, NGOs that we are working with and these are companies or organizations that have come and indicated that if students are willing to um, take one of the companies as an example and do a case study on that, then they can do that. So we have tried um, and previously have linked our MBA students with um, organization who would want um, one of the challenges or opportunities identified. And this is taken on then as a case study and, and the student can do an assignment on that. So that is possible. And what you find that with a lot of the, the workshops, you meet quite a lot of people. Obviously, there's networking opportunities that are available in, 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 in an MBA, and you will pe meet people from different walks of life who come from different, different organizations. So other students are actually linking others um, to, to organizations that are available out there who would want um, MBA students to do uh, an assignment on. So that is available and we try and assist with that. And you find that because of the current challenges with COVID, we have students. Um, I, I recently had a chat with one of our students who was unfortunately changed, but he saw an opportunity to start a business. So he just started in stage one as an example. And stage one looks at the foundations of a business. So he, uh, he started his own business and he's using his assignments actually to sort of slowly start his, his, his entrepreneurial journey. And those uh, the assignments um, that he's, sorry, the assignments that he's received in class are basically helping him with how to uh, put a, a system together, a process, how, how do you manage processes and systems in an organization? How do you manage finances in an organization? So already that MBA is paying off. So there's different ways of, of how we can assist our students depending on the need, but we are available and we are here that if our students are experiencing challenges, how can we then help you um, to, to, to basically continue to progress in your MBA? Great, uh, thanks for that, Lyneth. That helps a lot for a lot of, for some people who might be nervous about having access to some form of data uh, when it comes to, to working. Now, I know that we've kind of answered some of this stuff in terms of how Henley stays relevant, or at least how do we make sure that the MBA stays relevant? 
given everything that's going on um, across the country, across the world, and that sort of thing. And so we've kind of touched on that, but I think it is important to kind of give a sense around. So, I mean, I've sat in on a few classes in the MBA and some of these lectures and some of the examples that they bring through are so new and so relevant that you're amazed at how quickly they're able to evolve their modules to include some of the more conversational, some of the more contextual and more relevant issues going on around the world. I remember having a conversation with um, the module convener for strategy. Um, the name escapes me now, <laughs> but he was having interviews with our very own Discovery Health because he was building a case study around that because their shared value model is something that's appreciated quite a bit around the world. And so maybe if we can just talk about the, the research that our faculty is consistently doing and engaging with real world businesses as part of their research, that, and that research kind of comes into our learning. Well, I'll have a go at that, shall I? Because I've, <clears throat> we've just recently recruited Professor Dani Petso, who's been given a full professorship from the University of Reading in the UK, which is really hard to do, based on his excellent research record. He joined us as the deputy dean uh, from Gibbs before and head of research and the doctoral programs there. Um, you know, people go from one institution to another and we encourage it. We don't get upset when they do very much. Although we did, we were a bit sad when we lost to Vojo. I'm um, hoping he'll come back one day. Um, <laughs> and um, so Dani is a very good researcher and he's a, a good international researcher in marketing. He's got a number of research projects going on on diversity, on reputation, on marketing, on international business. We're setting up a center for international business here called the Dunning Center, which we'll, we'll explore international business. Um, we're looking at a range of research projects and we are, I shouldn't really share this, but we're actually um, really hoping our doctoral program will be running with a doctoral program here from the UK uh, much sooner than, than I thought was possible, which I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to. So we have a number of research. The other things that Dani is doing in his team, he's bringing in a range of researchers internationally. We're looking at agriculture, agricultural reform, uh, some of the presidential priorities. Um, and so he's building a body of researchers and, we'll, and our, our local academic research will continue. But on top of that, we've got three sort of centers, if you like, of Henley. We have Henley in the UK, but we also have Henley in Europe. So uh, although UK and Europe is a, is an interesting debate at the moment. We have in Germany, uh, Finland, Denmark, Malta. Uh, so we have Henley Europe, we have Henley Africa, which is ourselves here, the work we're doing in Nigeria. And we have Henley Asia, based on our campus in Malaysia and a lot of other work we're doing in China. Those three centers allow us to have one of the most um, interesting international kind of inputs of any business school I know. I mean. Our alumni were ranked number one in the world for potential to network by The Economist. And that's above all those other universities you've ever heard of. Yes, even them. And that's on The Economist website. And the reason we got that ranking was because we just have such a large international network rather than just a North American based one. We are spread across ranges of country. And so that does feed a lot of input into us. But then you're going to say perhaps, well, that's all right. That's all very Eurocentric. It's not, it's Asia centric as well and, and Africa centric. But it's all very like, um, you know, it's all, you know, aren't you just coming in and telling us what to do? No, we use that information to serve. So we come into the context we're doing, we're saying what is needed here. So what's needed in South Africa is massive transformation and capability building, both in the private and public sector. And that's our game. That's what we're going to do. Um, we're committing to extend education beyond it. So the research component is, it gets bigger and bigger. Uh, but what is the point of research? It's, it's not just, it's not about academics getting a lot of publications so they get professorships. That's not the point. It should be relevant. And my big drive here is to make very relevant research that's going to enable people to, to, to look at the difficulties and the constraints people face and try and find the ways around them. And that's why we've got a level five, six, and seven program, which is equivalent to the first of the three years of an undergrad degree and, and the honors program. Um, and we're going to put those more and more virtual so we'll be able to access the, you know, 90% of South Africans who haven't had a chance to, to do a degree. So in their 30s and 40s, they can come back into a degree, into formal education while they're working part time 
and do the five and the six and the seven, and within three years, I'll have a degree equivalent, which I never believed they would have. The year after that, they'll have a postgraduate diploma, and then they can do an MBA. And so we are really keen to revolutionize the access um, to education within South Africa. And I hope to virtualize them and drive them down. And that's our game. I'm very, very public about it. There's no secrets. And I love the tie. I love your question. I see you're a diver, Ty. I, was, I, was, uh, I also love diving. So I was trolling you and I thought that was fascinating. Um, the biggest threat to the MBA is the people who see challenge to an MBA as being a threat. So the biggest threat to the MBA is those business schools who like a, a, a clam when you touch it, it goes like this. You know, what you need to do, you need to open up to criticism and allow it to drive change. And so the biggest threat to an MBA is, is, is people not evolving the MBA. And, uh, and I think we are doing that. And we're doing that by being very open to criticism. And, uh, you know, I was talking to um, Laurie this morning. I'm sorry to pick on you, Laurie. And you were talking about a particular attitude of mind, which is great openness to um, critique. Um, I can't remember the actual words you called. You can put it in the chat if you want to. But it's about having this attitude that you know you don't take critique personally, but you you really you really you know unless it's egregious and really damaging, you encourage people to say what's going on so you can work on it. And that's the way we like to believe we work. Uh, you know, I hope that answers it, Sam Tabocho. Yeah, no, absolutely fantastic. Um, and it's good to hear Dean admit that he trolls people whilst we are in a oh, meeting right. session. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ty, hopefully you don't feel too violated. Um, no, it's on LinkedIn. All right, it's, it's, uh, it's public. <laughs> okay, so I think I see also that there's been some questions around the application process, but I see there have been specific answers to those that have been given already. Um, so a lot of the themes that were really coming out, um, we've kind of engaged around uh, to the to the people that have posed the questions and, and put the thoughts you know, into, into the chat, I guess it's for you guys to kind of either ask more or kind of tell us whether you know, you're satisfied with what we've been doing. You can either do it on the chat or just speak to us. The one thing I kind of forgot to mention up front is that all these thoughts and these themes and these questions that are coming up, um, we're, gonna, we, we're gonna capture them and they're going to be given to a graphic harvester that Graphic Harvester will put a nice graphic for us of all these themes and all the questions that came up with it and that we should be ready in the next two weeks or so. And that will be shared with pretty much uh, everybody who was part of this session as just a thank you note from our side and hopefully to capture some of the things that you might have forgotten about. And so two weeks later kind of triggers in terms of what we kind of talked about and how that may perhaps made you feel at the time or maybe it landed a different way at the time, and now it's kind of coming across um, a little bit better after having had time to, to kind of go through the information that we've been talking about. So I guess if there are no more questions and comments in the chat, uh, we can maybe perhaps open it up. Uh, if people can either raise their hands, uh, we, they can give us a question or make a comment. Um, there's a question that talks about, can one complete this course in less than three years? So it is 30 months. Um, I think the full tenure is 30 months. And I forget what the rate is of people that actually finish it within the 30 months. Um, but you certainly can, if you finish in 30 months, it's less than three years, unless you're asking whether you can finish it, you know, in, in shorter than 30 months. Uh, I'm not aware. Um, perhaps I could ask either Lineth or somebody else to, to perhaps answer that question. Um, hi, Tabucho. Um, the program is structured um, as a 30-month program. Um, there's actually workshops that are scheduled at the different um, stages. So you, we've, it's, 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 we've got three stages in the MBA program, stages one. Uh, which is 10 months, stage two, which is another 10, and stage three also making up the last 10 months. So what our students have done is that the first two, two years, because, sorry, the first um, stages, basic stages one and two, are structured with workshops. You're not able to sort of uh, speed that up or be able to finish that earlier, but what students tend to do is they would submit in stage two already in the second 10 months, they would start submitting or start working on the uh, proposal as an example. So we start introducing research skills, which 
is basically carried throughout up until your stage three. So what happens with research skills, as John has said that we have recently um, had Donny Peter join us. What he does is he really has structured these workshops so well that already in your stage two, we start introducing the research component and you are asked or taught to basically or given knowledge and skills on start looking at your research topic. What would you like to talk about? So you find that students already start thinking about that. And by the time that they come and or they start stage three, that they have a topic and they're able to do their management research challenge uh, in, in, in less than six months. So we've had that done before um, where you can sort of speed it up, but only in your stage study. So maybe finish the program in 24 months instead of um, uh, the 30 months. But in most cases, I think, as, as John has said, that it's not about the results of getting the program finished quickly. It's about the learnings that you gain while doing the MBA. Uh, go back and, and revisit the readings. Um, finish the program, yes, but the learning, I think, is the most important thing that you can gain out of an MBA. So we have had students who have finished the program earlier, uh, but I think realistically, let's say around 24 months and not earlier than that. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Lena. Thank you very much. And I think an absolutely critical point uh, towards the end there around that, you know, and you realize this as you go through the program, that this is so much more than the paper right, that you get. It's so much about getting fulfillment in terms of you applying some of the stuff that you learn. Before we move on to, to other aspects and another question, so there's a question that's kind of linked to the program length, which is asking kind of the opposite of that. Um, and given our reputation of being a family-friendly MBA, there's a question from Rufaro that talks about, can you pause in between stages and, and perhaps join a, a group later on? Um, the answer to that, Rufaro, is yes. Um, but I guess I'll let Lilith expand a little bit on that. Um, and yes, you can actually pause at, at, at the end of a stage. We understand that our students are busy people. Uh, you, you currently have families, there's work. And at times, life does happen and people go through extenuating circumstances. And the university then does allow you to go into a stage break. Uh, an example would be, um, I'd make an example with myself. I started the MBA. I should have actually been done by, I should have completed the program last year. But a lot of things happen and you, 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 you go through, um, sometimes you get promoted and which was something that happened. Um, it was a good challenge for me, but I thought, let me um, concentrate on, on my new position. But at the, at the same time, I had COVID hit and, and unfortunately I lost family members as well. So I had my new position. I had about five family members as an example pass away at, 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 at the, I think later, no, later in the year last year. So the decision for me was that let me rather uh, post for about three months. So there's, it varies depending on how long you will need and how long um, do you basically need time to take time off to look at, 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 at if you've been promoted, um, concentrate on your, on your new position. If you have family issues, look after the children, that's important. And life happens and we understand that. So you are able to post your studies and three months can do it for a year, depending on your circumstances. And when you're ready to come back, um, we, we basically look at the schedule, what modules need to still be completed. And we then link you up with a class that will be busy with those modules. So at the, at, I think, again, the most important thing that we highlighted is that you progress and complete the program. You might not finish the program in time, but you can come back and then eventually finish with an, a later intake. Um, so that's just uh, yeah, a scenario that I can just present. You can pause it at a stage and come back at a later, at a later time when you are ready to progress with your studies. Great stuff. Thanks, Deboho. Thank you so much, Lyneth. And so Rufaro also thanks you. Um, so one of the things that we kind of are very, very interested in, and it kind of links up to me Pony's question about how, how important <laughs> is it um, to, you know, how important is public speaking towards completing the MBA? And I'm saying I'm linking this to something else that we talked about earlier on, is why do you want to do the MBA, right? If some of you that have got the capability, if you can just write in the chat why you actually want to do the MBA, would really appreciate those comments. Um, so as you just listen to us answering some of the questions, um, perhaps just write down for us in terms of why you actually want to do the MBA. 
that's really good information for us. Uh, it's feedback that is used as input into certain aspects in terms of how we design the different programs and how we go about it. But to me, Pune's question of public speaking, how important is it uh, towards completing the MBA? I'm hoping you're not asking from a point of being nervous, uh, Miponi, um, but you can comment in the chat or you can turn in your camera and talk to us um, if public speaking is not a big thing for you. But you know, from my perspective, this is really an individual learning journey for a lot of people. Um, and we all want different things out of the MBA and, and, and so on. And part of, I guess, personal development is really tapping into who you truly are and leveraging the strengths that you have and not focusing on, on, on what you deem to be weaknesses. Because there's research out there that shows that you are better off on improving your strengths rather than focusing on your weaknesses if you're going to materially improve your leadership effectiveness and your management practice. And so having said that, however, I, I would like maybe Lineth to, since you've been through or you're going through the MBA, uh, how important is, is public speaking? Um, <laughs> it's very important. Um, and the whole you're right in that. I remember in my group when I started, I would tend to be the one that uh, would put the ideas together on the flip chart when everybody was giving input. And when when I was asked, Lilith, are you going to present this because you're writing this down? I'm like, um, I'll be the scribe and somebody else can present. But yeah, two and a half years later, I am standing, not okay, not standing as such, it's not face to face, it's online, but I am presenting um, in front of everyone. So it wasn't a strength, but I've learned to um, yeah, sort of put myself out there when the opportunity arises. It hasn't been easy, but I have allowed myself to get um, input and feedback from others. So John is 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 great at at at, at giving us feedback and in and in, in, in giving feedback. He is building us to be better leaders. So I'm saying it in front of everyone that he just doesn't say it. It, it is done at Handy Way. We have been identified, um, we've given opportunities to, to, to learn and, and to, I've been given an opportunity to embark on the MBA and it has been a great opportunity for me. But as well, um, I've, I've, we've got great leaders in the company or in the organization that will help us in, in, in strengthening um, our weaknesses and being better at it. So yeah, here I am. I am trying my best. It's, it's not perfected, but I am learning to speak in front of people. So me, Pony, it is possible. <laughs> Just put yourself out there, allow yourself to get feedback from others and give yourself the opportunity to grow. And this, this MBA does allow you to do that. And I like that when you are also in workshops, um, you're given the opportunity to participate. So put, a, put your hand up if you've got a question. So if you've got an answer and a question has been asked and you've got the answer, please put your hand up. Okay. Can I respond to that slightly? May I, to my point? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Because this answer. is really... There's nobody who will look at... at, at, at but it, it, it will be an opportunity. Sorry, John. No, no, no worries. Oh, um, my connection is unstable. The apologies. But yeah, me, Boni, it has been a great opportunity for me. I'm still learning. And I continue to, to learn from others as well. Thank you. <laughs> So, so from my point of view, this is a very interesting point. Uh, we think of ourselves talking in front of other people as public speaking. Um, and if you think about it, that just puts you in the middle of the whole game. And I always challenge people rather, rather rudely saying it's pure ego uh, that makes you worry about because you're thinking about yourself. If, you, if you're communicating, then we should be communicating things that are useful to others. And, you're, and, and we think of ourselves as a channel. How can you perfect the channel? And um, you can't possibly, you know, we have on our shoulder this voice all the time, knack, nattering away saying, you know, I'm an idiot, I'm useless, I can't do it. You know, it's just like, what a fool am I? And it's just chattering your ear all the time. Um, and it's like this big parrot, you know, uh, saying, you can't do it, you're, you're a fool. And what you have to do is learn to ignore the parrot or, or, or um, KTFP, kill the parrot, you know, um, and that'll, teach you and then you listen to the quiet voice uh, which is not about the one that's telling you not to so public speaking isn't what it's about it's important to communicate messages to help others 
And if you're nervous about that, then you're just, it's because you're, you're obsessing about yourself. If you're just thinking about, well, what does that, per how can I help that person understand? Um, and you realize you're gonna be suffering a little bit in that process because you've got this voice whittering on your ear. It's not a very helpful voice. It's never gonna take you anywhere, that voice. And the big thing is how do I learn to ignore it? Um, so, you know, as you can see, I'm playing around my screen here a bit, um, but how can you learn to ignore it and uh, become less and less and less in your conversation and then talk about the content more? And look, this is what we talk about in our, in our, in our thing. And then if you want to be, if it's all about you, then the, the message isn't getting there, is it? So, you know, you've just got to mediate the message so you, you, you're there sufficiently to help it, but not there to get in the way. And, 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 and that's really what you should do for public speaking. You know, it's really fun and, it's a, and you're giving gifts to other people by talking well. So don't, don't be nervous about it. Um, you know, it's a good thing to do. You can get, yeah, you'll love it after a while. That's some great screenplay there, John. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do, I am mindful of the time. Uh, we need to kind of wrap it up, but there are two aspects from Lawrence and from Tebuka that I think are important to address technically in terms of the program itself. The one question is around just briefly, Lineth, around how groups are structured and, and expectations from groups um, and whether people have the chance to work with different groups throughout the program or, or do they stay with one group? And then there's a question around, do we have an international study tour uh, within the MBA curriculum? Um, so if we can answer those and, and we do appreciate the, the comments in the chat in terms of why you wanna do an MBA, keep them coming, please. But Lynette, if you can just talk about those two aspects, group work, how it's structured and the expectations, uh, as well as the international study tour. Um, sure. So the international, so I'll, I'll go back to the group one. So the international study elective is offered as one of our elective choices in stage three of the MBA. And it's specifically aimed at providing program members with the opportunity to integrate and apply the MBA learning in an international con context. So it's a one week visit to organizations in, in, in a selected, um, let's say international country. Um, as an example, we've been to Russia, we've been to Chile in the last, um, I'd say 20, 2019. Unfortunately, last year we couldn't um, uh, have a trip due to the current challenges that we've been having with COVID. So basically the, this includes developing a business research uh, business research, sorry, business research uh, consulting, and you visit a company, a, a company basically, and the module basically is delivered by a combination of case studies with a company uh, that that is accompanied by a company visit, and you are then given a challenge or a, an opportunity that's presented by the company, and what program members do then is that they look at again, providing a solution to the challenge or an opportunity looking at what can be, what growth can come out of, a, of an opportunity that has been identified. So program members work in small teams while also carrying out, uh, carrying out personal reflection and self-study. And the nicest part about the international trip is that it's not only SA students. So you will meet other students from our international partner networks, which are uh, basically other uh, uh, sites that Henley exists, an example, you'll meet students in Germany. From Germany, you'll meet students from Malta that will also be a part of your group. So it's a great uh, opportunity to network. So we hope that in future, we can still offer the elective. Currently, we have not been able to do so due to um, the, 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 the current situation with COVID. And if you're not able to go on the trip, which is what we've done this year, is that you are you are then, there's, there's choices that you can elect. We've got about 15, I think, currently um, elective choices that you can choose from where you select an assignment and you select, it, sorry, you select a topic or a module. Example, brand strategy is one of them. Digital marketing is one of them. You can select to do one of those modules and then submit an assignment on those. Um, and, and again, uh, you only elect one but the module or the content for, from the other electives becomes available to you so that you can always go back to that learning. So we're not able to do one, but hoping that in future we can do an international study visit. And then in terms of groups, um, our, when you start the MBA program, we do allocate you into a learning team. Um, there's no assignments, there's no group assignments in the Hindi MBA, but the learning team is basically there as a support for you. You are 
put in the same learning team from stages one up until stages three, but you're not limited in terms of learnings to interact with others. It's a, I think the, the MBA is a great opportunity for you to network. So you will be put in a cohort with other students. So please link up with them. And I like what the current, what currently what um, the lecturers are doing is that you are put in breakout, random breakout rooms in, in, a Zoom, in a Zoom session or what we're currently doing with Collaborate Ultra, which is a system that we use for the MBA where you can attend these virtual sessions. So while you put out in a random breakout, you tend to, you, you are, you meet other students and that's an opportunity for you to interact and network and meet other students. And having said, uh, having mentioned networking, there's also networking opportunities where there's other activities, there's family friendly events that we, 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 we have planned and have scheduled as part of the MBA program schedule that you'll also attend and meet other students. So you're not limited. Okay, I see Lyneth has been cut off there uh, with the connectivity no, challenges. On the, on the international visit. So there are no group, the different oh, members sorry. of the group. Yeah. Sorry, Lyneth, your connectivity was a bit sorry. of a challenge a little earlier on there. Uh, apologies. I see you had raised your hand. I'm aware of the time in terms of we, we need to kind of end things. Uh, but I do want to say to people that we are, we've got record of all the comments and all of the questions. If we need to come back to certain specific ones, like Tammy, for example, who have just privately messaged to say she must please expand on her accreditation uh, question. But John, uh, if you can be brief with what you wanted to add to that last um, discussion. Yes. Um, we'll what I'd like to, do, to add to that is that when you're pricing MBAs in this country, they're all pretty much the same price. And you'll see, you'll see, you know, all the schools more or less the same. But when you look behind the price, you'll see there's, uh, there's a, an extra price for the international visits. Um, ours is optional. So when you see the price of 316 or less than that, if you, you pay up front, um, then um, you, you don't have to do the international visits. Some of the other ones you have to. Our MBA is actually about half a million rands, if not more for the UK people and more in Malta um, for exactly the same MBA, taught by the same people, marked by the same people, the same qualification, graduating in a place you see behind me in the UK. So it's quite good value. Um, so that is, is definitely one thing I'd like to say. The other thing I'd like to say is I'm, I'm going to give you a, a small tip now, which I hope will make you millions and millions of rands. Okay. Um, and it's just something that I learned in my business career because I was in business for a long time. And... Um, and, uh, and anyway, I'm going to say that uh, please apply for the MBA and please join us. We would really like you to join us for the MBA at the Henley. Um, and I really look forward to you joining us. I can't, I can't wait to see you in that classroom and benefiting from it. So what I just did was something that we all need to do always when we're in business. You ask for the order and you close the sale. So if you practice this assiduously and subtly, you will make a lot more money than if you didn't. So that's our free lesson from Henley Business School to end the session. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you so much. Um, guys, we, we are going to wrap it up. Tammy, I see your, your question around no assignments. I'm assuming that's referring to what Leonard said. There are no group assignments uh, in terms of hand-ins. Uh, there are individual assignments, however, as part of you passing um, uh, your different modules. And in the first stage, there are exams that you actually write at the end of the first stage. So with that said, um, as I said, we'll capture these comments and we will get a graphic harvester to put this stuff together nicely for everybody. Um, just as a bit of a recap, um, apologies for going over by four minutes, but it's, it's an indication of how interactive and how engaged you've kept us during this, this session. And it is my sincere hope that you've gotten at least what you came here for. And I'm hoping that most people got way more than they actually bargained for in terms of what today's session has been about. So to everybody that has been part of the session, firstly, thank you, thank you very much. And to the guys running the tech in the background, we really appreciate your skill and your guidance uh, as we go through this and, and learning to live in this virtual world. Um, and to our panelists, Lyneth and, and, and John, thank you again for being as interactive as you have been uh, and entirely engaging. From my side, thank you, thank you so much. And we hope to see you soon um if not on henley streets out in polzov at least virtually um as we're doing now so 
It's been a fantastic session and thank you everybody and have a good night.